everybody. Hi, Honorholics. I'm glad that you're here. I have another yarn haul that I've been saving to show you. And I'm trying to tape these all at one time so I can disperse them over weeks. But I wanted to get these done because I need to pack them <laughs> for right now because I'm running out of room. But I wanted to show them to you. Um, now, if you've ever heard of Ice Yarn, and you try to go on ice.com to order it, you end up paying more for shipping than you do for what you have in yarn, which I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm not buying $50 worth of yarn and paying $70 and to ship it. No, not doing it. But I had found this place called Yarn Nut, and I ordered some yarn from them and it was ice yarn and it is they're small but they're great for amigurumis and stuff that i'm going to be trying to work on some more i'm not the greatest at it but i'll give it a go my deer turned out pretty cool and these are 100 percent acrylic and they are an ice yarn and it does not tell you it's 160 meters, so whatever that comes out in yards, I really don't know. I have to figure that out. But I got two blues. I got two of these really pretty silverish browns. I got two of these, like, caramel browns I mean I'm not fancy I don't say caramels caramel that's what it is and then I got this I love this one this is fluorescent green they're gorgeous love them and then I got fluorescent pink so 80s you know this okay then I have two beautiful purples. Two orange. Two light purples or lavender, whichever ones you want to go with. They don't really have a color on them, so I can't really tell you what they are, but they just have a number. And then I had this fluorescent green. Tell me this is not 80s. Okay, so cool. Then I have a light rose pinkish color. And I got four of these electric blue. Or if you want to go turquoise maybe, but I think it's more like an electric blue. Red, because you always have to have red. And green and then I ordered this one because I just was amazed at the price for this it was a couple dollars it's by Darice and it's the jumbo yarn acrylic and it has 716 yards in this big boy look at this bad boy huge beautiful color of pink he will go great with all my stuff. Even though Robert's having a fit because I'm going yarn crazy. But I'm like, how am I supposed to know if I don't try all the companies? Right? Don't know. Um, so, that is my yarn haul from them. So, now I'm going to tell you something else about the 80s. There is a hot dog stand that is still in Cicero called Henry's. And... Before it used to be just a building and you would walk up or ride your bike down there and you would go to the window, order your food. And then everybody would just sit around on the little, those little cement things for the parking, you know, the little end posts for the parking. And everybody, I mean, everybody, it wasn't just one or two. You'd have everybody there at lunchtime or on a Saturday or Sunday and everybody would just get their food, go over 
sit down on one of the cement things, eat your food, get on your bike, ride wherever you're going, do whatever. And they are still there today, which my daughter, when she first got pregnant, flew in just to go eat to all the places that we went to that I took them to and showed them what it was like where we used to eat and where we grew up. And they were so, I had all the kids with we, me and mom and we took them down there and we took them to Henry's and they got their hot dogs and cheese sticks and you know, nobody even knows what gravy bread is around here, but they used to do French bread dipped in the beef gravy and you just ate gravy bread. And they didn't call them mozzarella sticks. They were cheese sticks. That's it. Just cheese sticks. That's what they were. So the kids lost their minds when they got their hot dogs and they opened up the paper. And now this time they had built a little shelter inside. So it has like five or six booths inside. So we would all go in there and sit down at the tables and they, and they would eat. And when we first took them and they opened the wrapper, they were just blown away because they put the, the fries in the hot dogs, you know, in the bun with the hot dogs and then a bunch around it. So you get a ton of fries. And they could not believe that they had french fries in the buns. And it, to me, it was normal, but to them, it was amazing. And they loved it. And <laughs> they just kept going back and ordering something different. Something this, something that, something this. So she definitely went there to eat because that was her craving. She had to go there. She was just running my knees crazy, going all over to eat. She misses it so much being so far away. And, <laughs> and, and it's still a great place. They are. They still have their original recipe they use for their hot dogs. Um, I believe it did change hands, but in the contract for them, they had to keep the recipe. And the store, uh, the company that makes them, still makes their recipes for just that hot dog stand, which is the best hot dogs I've ever had. So that's something else from the eighties that I wanted to tell you about. And I'm going to tell you about Munchkin. I already told you about Peanut. And if you watch one of the shorts, you can see what Peanut Munchkin looks like. Munchkin is black and brown. She is a half Chihuahua and a half mini Greyhound. But now her face is completely white. She's got, um, she's 18. She has no teeth. She So I have to boil chicken and mush it up for her. So she loves it. She loves being babied. Everything has to be crumbled and mushed up for her because she can't chew. And chihuahuas nat naturally have bad teeth. So eventually, they do have to have them pulled. No matter what you do, brushing them, whatever. But Munchkin was given to me by someone I worked with who had rescued her. This guy would, and she wasn't even three pounds when we got her. And with her height from the Greyhound, and she's got the curve in the stomach like a Greyhound, the big chest, all, and then no stomach like the Greyhounds do. But she's got the attitude of a Chihuahua. And this guy had beat her so bad, she had pins. She has pins still, holding her legs together. But she is just so active. She jumps around, she runs, she plays. You would never guess she was 18. But if you watch the short, you can see a picture of her and me talking to her and, and that, and you understand. So she was my rescue. And I, she hid under a table for like three days. She wouldn't come out. She's terrified of people, especially guys. Any guys that walked in with a hat on and glasses, like when she'd see my brother, she would flip out because I guess this must remind her of the guy that hurt her. So when he would sit down, she was fine. She'd run over, play, lick his face, everything like that. No problems. But not when he first walked in. So she hid under the table. So I started, I went to the pet store and I bought one of every little treat. And we made a trail coming from the table all the way out so I could see what she liked. Nah, 
She didn't want it. Didn't like him. Started boiling chicken. Now that got her out. After that, she was in my bed all the time, sleeping with one of us. She is a princess. And because she's older now, we have to pad. Um, she has pillows or blankets or something that she has to lay on. Because she has arthritis now and it hurts her bones. And, and she's just a beautiful puppy. And how someone could do that is stupid it's just stupid if you can hurt an animal like that i don't think you should even be around them so that's why i always say adopt don't shop there's so many beautiful animals that are in these shelters just waiting for a home because people get tired of them and they want to get rid of them and chihuahuas were a real big thing when the taco bell dogs you know the chihuahuas my sister has a whole collection of the real Taco Bell dogs. This one's just one of the bobbleheads. Yeah. But um, everybody wanted a, ta uh, a Taco Bell dog. So all of them went out and bought chihuahuas, not really knowing what to, to, what to expect. They didn't check. These dogs bark constantly. They're very high maintenance. So the shelters ended up getting overwhelmed with chihuahuas. Because everybody was dropping them off saying, I can't handle these dogs. And then they had a rescue that took um, like hundreds of them out of these shelters from all over. And they found them all homes for people that actually were Chihuahua mommies. And you have to be a Chihuahua mommy to love Chihuahuas. So investigate what kind of dogs that you get. Check out if they're high maintenance. If they shed a lot if they need more room to run you know do your homework before you get one but if you have room in your home adopt one who knows how long they've been in these shelters my daughter sadie she is working with shelters out in her area and they still have kill shelters so if an animal is there for like more than i believe it's three days they end up putting them down unless somebody comes in and tags them saying they're going to a rescue. So she's working with rescues and she is working to get the kill shelter uh, um, gone because it shouldn't even be there. Give it a chance. I mean, and they have puppy trails where people will drive from one, ta one um, state meet at the state line to another one trade the dogs to them the next one keep training them training them training them till they get to the state that they are being adopted in and she has three amazing pups she's got zoe she's got Bo, and she's got um her new one which is zeus who is giant and i can't wait to meet him but you gotta meet my baby first my little June bug. So I've talked enough. Please click like and subscribe. And always remember, adopt, don't shop. And if you want to be a, yarn a yarnaholic, come talk to me. We can learn together. We can do things together. I'm working on some projects now that I want to show you and things. And it'll be great. So have a good day. Bye.